All right, well, welcome to our last session of the day. Uh, our next speaker is somebody that I'm sure nobody here knows who he is. Uh, Ethan Galstad, he is the founder of Nagios and the president of Nagios Enterprises. Uh, also happens to be my boss, and I have the privilege for working for him. He's probably the best boss I've ever had, and uh, he paid me to say that. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> well, let's give Ethan a hand, everybody. Okay, all right. Thank you, Mike. Um, I didn't actually pay him to say that. He's actually, you know, probably our best guy on our team, but thank you. Um, yeah, I just wanted to, I, I mentioned uh, Nagi SXI briefly in the, um, in the keynote this morning. It's our, it's our commercial product, and I've got a few slides. I'll give, I'll try to go through the slides pretty quickly. Um, the slides were meant as a backup in case my VMs totally failed or, <laughs> You know, I couldn't get internet access, a demo. Um, a lot of things can go wrong in a demo. I have told our team plenty of times it's not a good demo unless something goes wrong, because half the time when I'm giving them a demo, something goes wrong. So um, hopefully nothing will go wrong or we'll minimize what does go wrong, I guess. Um, Nagios XI, it's our, it's our commercial product. It's um, built on top of Nagios Core and other open source components, like PNP is the graphing engine we use. Uh, we use Nagios QL um, as the advanced configuration backend. We've actually modified it. We're moving towards Nagios CCM, which is basically a, a rewrite of a lot of what's in Nagios QL right now. Um, but it's built on a lot of the, the best tools that, that were out there that we found were used by the community most widely. Uh, when we started the company in 2007, we, we primarily did consulting. and um, it seemed that everybody that, that we did consulting for wanted the same things. They wanted integrated performance graphing, a database backend, and a bunch of other stuff. And, you know, we did a lot of those jobs, and they had a lot of similarities. And after a while, we just said, you know, we need to package uh, something together that's a product that fits the needs of 90% of the people who contact us because it doesn't make sense to do a one-off uh, implementation all the time. It's really time intensive if you've ever done consulting. Uh, so that's kind of how Nagia Sixi got started. The first release was, um, you know, December of '09. I think we promised everybody it would be out by the end of the year. So New Year's Eve night, we was uploading the, you know, first release. Um, it, we really got it in the nick of t time, but uh, so it's been out for almost two years. Um, we put a lot of thought into how it was designed, so that we'd have maximum flexibility, just like Nagia's core does. Uh, it provides you a lot of flexibility in, in that you can design plugins for it, add-ons for it. We wanted the same type of flexibility in the architecture for Nagios XI. And there are a number of different APIs that we built into Nagios XI that you can grab data from the back end, integrate it with your own front end. Like if you have a public portal, you want to display some status information, it's very easy to do. Um, we have what are called configuration wizards, and I'll take you through those. Um, but we've added a lot, it, it done a lot of work into the underlying stuff um, that you don't really see. There's also been a lot of work done on the UI to actually integrate a lot of these components. If you, um, if you have used Nagios Core with a lot of the common add-ons, you know that you can do it. And once you know how to do it, it's not that hard to do. It's just that it's, it's not easy to get a unified look. And sometimes, oftentimes, end users who are not uh, Linux, Unix, super admins, and managers also want something that looks good. And so that we spent a lot of time on Nagios XI making sure that we, you know, made it look integrated. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to go briefly over some of the features, um, and then I'll start with the demo. Uh, one of the biggest things we added in Nagios XI was dashboards, um, and I'll, I'll demonstrate those. Integrated performance graphing. We did a lot of work to make sure that each user who logged in um, got to customize their own preferences. Um, one example of that is if I log in, I can personally customize when I get notification me messages or what those messages look like. And if you're running Nagios Core, it's not easy to do. You have to go back to the Nagios admin and say, could you change um, my notification times or change the format of the messages that I get? I want messages that look different than you. And we've 
tried to put a lot of the power to customize the way Nagia Sucksai works, feels, and how it operates in the hands of the actual end users who might be using it. Um, configuration wizards, I mentioned, are a really easy way to get up and running and monitoring something very easily. You don't need to be a super network admin to understand what it's, you know, what how to set something up. Um, we have, as I mentioned, the Nagios CCM, Nagios QL, advanced config GUI, added things like auto discovery visualizations and uh, some reporting stuff. There's a ton of stuff. And we never have time. We do a lot of WebEx demos for uh, clients or people that are looking at XI, and we, you know, we can never get through a portion of what XI has to offer in an hour. So I, I, I'm not going to try to hit on everything. Um, but uh, I'll just touch, touch on some of the highlights. With the dashboards, um, the customized dashboards are available to each user. They can customize them with dashlets that get updated you know, automatically with AJAX. And they can have unlimited dashboards, and they're distinct per user. As an admin, you can create dashboards and deploy them to other users. So if you're, um, you, know, you have a dashboard that you think would be really cool or interesting for management, you can create that dashboard and then deploy it to one or more other user accounts in Nagios XI. You can also keep that dashboard synchronized so the managers can't change it or delete it. Um, so some kind of cool stuff you can do. Built-in graphs, we use PNP. Um, it's one of the big graphing applications out there. Nagios Graph is another one. You heard from Matt Wall um, earlier. He's one of the guys behind Nagios Graph. But we chose PNP initially. Um, seems to work pretty well. We might switch, actually, to Nagios Graph. We were thinking about that in the future. Um, I already m mentioned the per-user customization, um, notification preferences, dashboards, views. These are all per-user. Configuration has, made, has been made a lot easier in Nagios XI. If you are currently using Nagios Core, you know what the screen is. It's, <laughs> it's what you have to do to edit, essentially, your config files right now. You, know, you launch Emacs, VI, Nano. Um, maybe you use one of the configuration front ends for Nagios, but you you have to know the syntax and uh, of the Nagios config files, and you have to know you know what things like you know use and register mean, and that's not I mean normal IT people shouldn't have to learn this stuff, and non IT people should never have to see anything like this. Um, what we did in Nagios XI is made what are called configuration wizards, and this is something where, um, you know, the the end users can say, "I want to monitor a website, or a Windows server, or a Linux server, or a DNS server," and they can just choose from a list. And when they choose the proper wizard, it asks them simple questions like, "Okay, you want to monitor a website? What's the URL?" And they enter the URL, and it you know, gives them a few options. They could click apply, and Nagios starts monitoring that. They never need to. Uh, understand what the check HTTP plugin is or the syntax. Um, it just, it, it's an easy way to, to, to I guess, get, get things done. Um, screenshot of one of them here. It's, this is the printer monitoring wizard. I'll take you through a wizard live so you can see what it is. Uh, but it, it's just, these are meant to just ask very simple questions that people can understand very easily. Uh, the advanced configuration GUI is the Nagios CCM. It's based on Nagios QL. Uh, we're re rewriting the front end based on uh, feedback we've gotten from our customers and some features that they want. Uh, Auto discovery was a new feature that we actually added, uh, you know, in the past nine months or so. Uh, underneath the hood, uh, it runs Nmap and Fping, and these utilities are available for Nagios Core. You can find them on Nagios Exchange. They're not end user friendly at all. And that's why we wrote a config or you know GUI on top of them to make them easy to use, easy to understand, and actually easy to take the auto discovery job results and import them or apply them to your monitoring configuration. Uh, and one thing that's pretty cool is you can create a you know a set up monitoring for a server like a website or your Windows server, your firewall, and get it just right, and then you can say I've got a hundred of those. And they're all exactly the same, except each one has a different IP address. And what you can do is use our bulk import wizard to basically clone um, one of the machines that you've already defined in Nagios XI and replicate that over all 100. It's a pretty nice little feature. Um, we've added some visualizations. Um, Nagios Core and Nagios XI both have 
kind of the standard logging and reports that are available. Um, they're really practical, they're extremely boring, and nobody likes looking through the logs. They're useful, and you need to look through logs when you diagnose a problem or you, know, you want to figure out what happened, but they're really boring to look at. Um, and they're not always easy to interpret. So what we decided is to, to change the way that data was represented to make it easier to understand. Uh, one of these is, is called the alert stream, and I'll show you what this looks like in, in real life. I'll show you an, an example. Um, but it, it's just a, it's a different way to visualize the types of alerts or the number of alerts that have come in over time. And when you look at a graph like this, it's easy for your mind and your eye to spot patterns and to pick out problem makers. Uh, and that's what we try to do in AugieSX. I change the way that you can understand the data, make it more readable, more interesting. Um, this is our heat map. It's uh, another type of visualization. It allows you to spot patterns. I mean, you can look at a log file and see, okay, you know, this website went down, you know, here and here and here and yeah, yeah, yeah. But when you graph it on a heat map like this, you, you can immediately spot that there are patterns. Uh, and if you know that the horizontal axis is time and the vertical axis is hosts and services, you can, you can immediately pick out that there are a couple, you know, two, two hosts that are causing problems almost consistently. Um, so it's a really nice way to, to just visualize what's happening on your network. Uh, our network replay, I'll show you that in real time, actually. It's much, you know, it's, it's not really, the replay allows you to basically see in real time or going back in time and see how the network changed. Um, see how hosts went up or down or how, how the network status changed over time. Um, and some flashy stuff that I'll show you later. Um, we redesigned the reports to make them easier to understand. We took out some data that was maybe a little bit too advanced for most people. Um, the Nagios core reports are still available under the hood, but the, the new XI ones um, were kind of toned down a little bit and uh, we try to make them easier to understand for everyone. We also added data export like CSV and PDF to make it really easy. A lot of people wanted and needed PDF reports for management or for some kind of incident uh, response thing, so that's in there now. Um, each user can add their own favorite reports, so somebody can say, look, uh, I, I, I want to always, I want to easily be able to always run an availability report for this group, group of servers, excuse me, and I always want that be, report to be like the previous week from whenever I run the report. So you can in XI create a report, set it as your favorite, and you can immediately go back there. It's like, kind of like a memorized report. Makes it easier to use. Uh, and one of our texts um, is just finishing up testing on scheduled reports that allows you to very easily say, okay, email this report to me or my manager or somebody else every Wednesday at 3 p.m. or every, you know, the first of the month uh, and the 15th of the month. It's really nice to get automated reports. Um, all right, so that's enough of the slides. The, that was just in case all the, the VMs died, but I think they're, they're okay, so I'll, I'll show you uh, an example of some stuff. And I, um, you know, if you have questions, I'll, I'll kind of treat this like a, a demo when we do WebEx.